Entertainment and welcome back guys. Yes, we're done with the AS revision videos, but we have to do A2 now guys if you're in year 14 or if you're in year 13 of uh, from studying in England, Scotland or Wales, uh, then this is going to be very applicable to you because A2 is going to be your final year of A-levels. This is going to, going to determine you getting into university or not, especially if your spec is 60% worth of your overall A level in your second year. And uh, if you do business studies, this video is going to be great. We're also going to go through biology, which we've started, and we're also going to go to digital technology as well. But digital technology, a lot of its course, we have 20% uh, of its coursework. So uh, there's only one exam you'll be doing. So we're only going to cover one, the the A21 for digital technology. But we're going to talk about business today, guys. We're going to do economies of scale. We were off center, but in a different way. Teachers will teach you. You might do it in different orders. We started off with objectives, but we'll get around to that. And um, you'll actually see quite a lot of uploads. This is going to be uploaded on Sunday, the 16th, and then on Monday. The 17th year, you're going to see quite a lot of uploads, or maybe three or four, of these business studies revision video videos going up. But let's get straight into it. We're going to talk about economies of scale, guys. So, essentially, what is economies of scale? Economies of scale is a proportionate saving in costs, which is gained by an increased level in production. This economies of scale, however, was when cost disadvantages the firms accrue due to an increase in the firm size, or the output will result in, or a and it, or an increase in output will result in production of goods or services at an increased price. So, essentially, economies of scale, the more you buy, the lower the price. Diseconomies of scale is a disadvantage of the cost that they accrue due to your firm being larger or um, your output resulting in the production of goods that are at an increased price. So, there's, there's different types of economies of scale, not this economy. We're going to talk about economies at the moment. So, you have internal economies of scale, which arise from the growth of the business itself. These have a lower long range average cost, they have efficiencies from a larger scale production, and they have a range of different types of economies, such as technical and financial. The effects of internal economies of scale is that you'll have lower costs, which improve in the long run productive efficiency, given a competitive advantage. You'll have lower prices, meaning higher profits, as this will drive in more sales. You'll have a long run average total curve decline and internal economies of scale will be exploited. So there's different types of internal economies of scale. Then. You have technical, which is whenever a large, when you largely invest in expensive specialist capital machinery. This is not cost efficient for a small business. Specialization of the workforce is another type. This is when the larger business will split complex production processes into separate tasks, which will boost the productivity, producing more output at the same time. Then of marketing, which is spreading your advertising and marketing costs over a large output, so you can purchase your inputs in bulk at a negotiated discounted price if you have sufficient negotiation power in the market. This is also known as a wee bit like monopsony power. So. Uh, like we're just going to say here now. So the large firm will purchase factor inputs in bulk at discounted prices if they have monopsony power. Essentially that's its buying power. And um, you then have managerial, which is the form of division of labor where you employ specialist people that supervise production systems and these can manage marketing systems and oversee human resources. You have financial economies of scale where larger firms which can be rated by financial markets will have more credit will be more credit worthy and they will have access to credit facilities and more favorable rates of borrowing. Small firms, however, will have a high rate of interest, but businesses that are quoted on the stock market will raise money cheaply through shares and pay a lower rate of interest on bonds. And finally, you have network internal economies of scale, which is the extra cost of adding one more user is close to zero, but the benefits are huge as a new user can interact and trade with all existing members. This is something like eBay, for example. So what's external economies of scale then? External economies of scale occur outside the business and an industry. Benefits most firms, it includes agglomeration economies and it helps explain the rapid growth of many cities. So examples are the development of R&D facilities and universities, spending by the local authority improving the transport network, the relocation of component suppliers to the main centre of manufacturing and agglomeration economies resulting from clustering businesses in distinct geographical locations like Silicon Valley. Then we have diseconomies of scale, and these occur due to control, such as when, which is whenever you monitor productivity and the quality of output, and therefore imper imperfect and expensive links to the concept of the principal agent problem. It can also occur due to coordination, which is when it's difficult to coordinate complicated production processes across several plants and different locations and countries. Achieving efficient flows of information is expensive at the cost of managing supply contracts. Then it occurred to cooperation. Don't get this mixed up with coordination. Cooperation is whenever workers will develop a sense of alienation and a loss of morale, and they will not be considered as an integral part of the business, meaning their productivity will fall. 
and they may finally occur due to poor communication, which is whenever you communicate along a chain of command being more difficult as there's more layers which can distort the message and the wider span of control from managers result in workers being less clear in their instructions with less face-to-face -face meetings and less feedback so communication is less effective. If you want more information that's here, wait for our communication video part one coming down Monday the 17th where we talk about communication and advanced communication you'll be a lot more up to date on how poor communication can affect this economies of scale. So finally then we're going to talk about how you can solve this economies of scale and then how you can avoid it. So a possible solution is involving empowerment, which is the delegation of decision making, making employees uh, happier. You can use job enrichment, which is making jobs more interesting, once again make employers have a higher morale, and finally teamwork, which is splitting employees into teams. You can all realise this back to last year for AS, and now you talked about non-monetary motivation, these are free methods of that. So, avoiding this economy of scale, then how do you actually uh, avoid it from happening for a fist so you don't have to use solutions? Well, you can use human resource management, which focuses improvements in recruitment, communication, training, promotion, retention, and support of faculty and staff. You can have performance related pay, which is providing financial incentives for the workforce leading to improvement in industrial relations and higher productivity. And finally, you can just outsource, which is pretty simple. We did this in AS. You can reduce your costs but retain control over the production, um, and you'll have a price to pay in terms of impact on the job security of workers. So, outsourcing, if you don't know what it actually is, it just says that where you basically just take a part of the production process and let another company do it for you. But your um, so this reduces your costs because it might be cheaper labor. Uh, and all that there, but you're going to have to pay the turn impact on the job security of your own workers because they will not be taking part in that part of the production process, so therefore your workers will be more or less redundant. Thank you for watching this video of the One Economy to Scale, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Dylan from CR Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.